I'm Sai, I'm Jill Zamolik. Caleb Cub Stevens could not be here today, so he is dead to me. On this first month's edition of AHS Shout, we have an interview with a real man of Ames High, your questions about the future, a discussion with our recently returned visitors of Uganda, and special shout outs to upcoming events, all on this month's episode of AHS Shout. As high school students, the future can seem an uncertain and unstable place. We asked the students of Ames High what they're wondering about what's ahead. My question for the future is, will jet fuel melt sealed leaves? Whether peace will be worldwide? I want to know when we're going to build a new pool. What I'm wondering about the future is what the word freedom means. If robots control the universe and if you don't have to walk the dog by yourself. What I'd be doing in the future. Like if I'm going to go to college, the college that I want to go to. Who becomes president so I can vote for them. Who becomes president so I can know if I need to move to Canada or not. If there'll actually be hoverboards in the future. Like back to the future. I'd like to know if I could actually make it in music in the future because that's like my life goal. In the future I want to see what big advancements will come to help humanity. Many at Ames High wonder who the Alpha Ginger is. Allow us at AHS Shout to put forth our contender. We talk to an extraordinary senior of Ames High, Aaron Mann. I'm Aaron Mann, I'm a senior. I'm in Chef and NHS and Green Butterfly and um, I'm running right now. I'll do tennis in the spring. Hunting to Screen Butterfly is all about um, paper recycling. So they're the little bins in most people's classrooms, even though a lot of people don't notice them or use them, but they're there. And so every week we, we're the people who sort through all that. So we send those off to a company so they can be recycled. And like going to a uh, village in for a free pie on Wednesdays is really good because it's Wednesday after school. Um, and that's what it's all about. I'm just uh, looking at people's really cool drawings. It's very impressive what people do in their free time. Last year, um, we started doing something cool where we took um, some paper that didn't have names or anything on it, and we sent it to the, um, to the Ames School District Publishing. And so they turned it into little notepads that we could use just at Ames High. So I play trombone in the band. I've done a few honor bands, which have been sort of fun. Last year, um, I got an All-State, which was really cool. It was a lot of musicians, and it was very loud, and it was impressive how beautiful we can make it sound. Besides that, pep band is definitely the best activity. Um, just going out to the basketball games and playing like pop music and just cheering along to everything and also doing jazz. Um, it's really cool. I'm not much of a soloist myself, but I don't know. I like the rhythm. I play tennis because I've been doing it for quite a while, like since I was five years old. And it's so great because it's really a lifetime sport. It's a bit of a time commitment. It's like four weeks of really, really intense training and like 10 meets, but it's definitely worth it. Uh, really cool people. For next year, I basically set major in engineering, probably environmental, but uh, still, uh, maybe chemistry will be for me, so I don't know. Last summer, between sophomore and junior year, I got to, um, I applied for this, it's called NSLIY, and I went to China. It's six weeks in a homestay, and it's like four hours of language learning every morning. And so I've been working on Chinese for a while, and this really just took it to the step for step up. I think the main thing is just confidence, and it really translated, like, yeah, confidence in the language, but also made me way more confident just in all parts of my life. One of the most incredible opportunities at our school is the chance to travel to Uganda for three weeks to build a primary school. We bring you the story of this experience. The Uganda Project is one of the most rare and fulfilling opportunities available anywhere, let alone to the students of Ames High School. Mr. Mooney, a social studies teacher here and the brave soul who takes 20 students to a third world country every year, explains what it is and how it got started. 
The Uganda Project is a service learning project where Ames High students go to Uganda, which is in East Africa, and we're there for three weeks, and we work with a local community to build classrooms for a primary school. Well, when I first came to Ames High, I thought we might be able to peel six or eight kids off that would want to go help build a school. And so I called a meeting, anyone interested in going to build a school in Africa, and a hundred people showed up to that first meeting. And I spent an hour trying to talk them out of it. I told them how horrible it was going to be. And at the end of the meeting, we had 28 students who wanted to go. And that was the first year in 2004. He also believes in the lessons Uganda can teach students. I was so frustrated as a young teacher trying to teach culture and I think that's where this idea came from is, well, let's just let them experience culture. So it's a, it's a happy 21 days for me because I don't have to do anything. Uganda does it all. Students are initially interested in the trip for a variety of reasons. I'm Theo Brenner. I'm a senior. My name is Macy Valrecht, and I'm also a senior. I was first introduced to the Uganda trip when my sister went. I became more interested when I came to the high school, and I joined Chef, and I became pretty involved in Chef. And so... I wanted to kind of make as much of a difference as I could and kind of see how you would start to make that difference. I felt like being able to actually see it would, I don't know, help me to understand the problem more. The service project is packed with novel and valuable experiences so that students have plenty of highlights to choose from. My favorite part would be getting to know the people in the village that we are working in, building those relationships and realizing, like, I don't know, that they're similar to us and. I, I think that was um, like really eye-opening for me. We were actually doing manual labor next to these mothers who have to, like that's their main way that they can pay for their kid to go to school. People tend to generalize a lot. Um, countries like Uganda or people who are poor in Uganda, they don't think about that these are like personalities and maybe this person's like really funny or like makes all these jokes and like it was cool to get to know them on that deeper level, I think. My name is Nathaniel Metcalf, I'm in 12th grade, and this last summer I went to Uganda. Well, I think that some of the favorite moments would have to be the nights that we would spend all together in one of the people's rooms, either playing cards or telling stories, making jokes. Other times, uh, when we went to CP Falls, we had to climb down a 90-foot ladder that was not the most safe of things. And students gained an extraordinary amount from the trip. My name is Maddie Kupfer and I'm in 12th grade. I'm a senior. Something that I did was when we would go to the work site, I talked to a few of the, the older people there and some of the younger people too um, and just asked them for different words and phrases. And one of the, my favorite ones that got a lot of good reactions was I wanted to know how to say, I love learning this language. I would say, um, Amaro Fonjirok Dudokme. They really liked that, so that was cool. Another really cool part of the trip is that you're on your own, really, for the most part, because Mooney's a very laid-back guy, you might say, and so you get a lot of freedom, and you basically just get to learn how to travel. Those who have gone universally recommend it. I would recommend Uganda to anyone who is all right with being away from their phone for three weeks, to anyone who needs a reality check, <laughs> anyone who needs to maybe deal without air conditioning for a little bit. So juniors and seniors of Ames High, apply today and find a way to take advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity. Coming up this month at Ames High on October 1st is the AHS Hall of Fame night, followed by No School on October 5th, the Fall Choral Concert on October 12th, the Academic Awards followed by the Marching Band Spectacular on October 19th. That's all for this first month's edition of AHS Shout. I'm Jill Zamolik, and we'll see you next month.